the gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. Ah, your parents planned for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The gift of a man, whether there is space or not, the gift can push people and create space for him and usher him into the place of the great. A man's gift can make room. Have you ever heard people say no space? Have you heard that language? Sorry, no space. If there was space, it would have helped you. The Bible says a man's gift has the ability to push people and make space. Not only that, when other people are segregating, it can usher him to the place of the great. Hallelujah. It can usher him to the place of the great. Write it quickly. What is a gift? God-given abilities. God-given abilities. Your potentials. God-given abilities. That's simply what a gift is. Your God-given ability. The Bible says if you take it seriously... It can create space for you in life. This night we are not just talking of gift. We are also talking of skill. What's your skill? Your learned abilities. Acquired abilities. The difference between a gift and a skill. Is that one is God given. It can only be developed. The other one can be learned. It can be acquired. Both of them have the capacity to bring you before great people. Say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of an interesting person called Joseph. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he had Joseph, by the way, please. Joseph was not a dreamer, for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not a, there was nothing spectacular about the dreams of Joseph. As far as we know in the Bible, he had only two dreams. How many times have you had it? Have, have you dreamt? Are you a dreamer? So Joseph was not, his gift was not dreaming. His gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Are you following me now? So the Bible says that because of that ability, his brothers envied him. Many things happened. And then the Bible, I'm just rushing now. The Bible says when he was put, remember when, when um, Potiphar's wife and all her story, 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 let's just jump it. He found himself the prison is that true and the bible says when he found himself in the prison there was the wine presser and the baker but he realized that he had something is that true are you following me now when it was time for god to bless him god made the king to dream and close the heavens over the sorcerers and the magicians are you listening to me they got up in the morning and try to do their enchantment as usual. No way. Because it was time for God to bring a man into success. But God realized that a gift can open a way. What way? The way of the prison. Nothing else would have opened that way for Joseph. Because they were not planning to bring him out. Is that true? There are many people today. Who do not realize. That if they take advantage of the gift of God that is in them. It has the ability to take them from where they are into realms that they never dreamt possible. And tonight, this is our prayer. We've been examining the principles of success. There is a dimension of success that only your gift can bring to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your gift. This dependency attitude of Nigerians is what has stopped them from exploring their gift. Ale, ale baka musamu. Have you heard that statement? What is it in English? May God give you so that we will get. 
is, is a wrong concept of dependence. That's how many of us are waiting. Say, oh boy, just get work. Once you are there, just remember me. Your boy is there. Oh. See, let me tell you, if that is your mindset, you are going to suffer in this Nigeria. And in case you think you will run abroad, you will still suffer. There are still people, there are people under the bridge of every nation, true or false. Every nation in the world has, has bridge and there are people that sleep there. It's just that films don't carry it. There is ghetto everywhere, true or false. So, many of us have this escapism mind. You are just trying to get lottery and say, oh God, let this green American lottery just happen. They would go and see how many Nigerians live like, like outcasts abroad. Because they believe. I've told you, there is nowhere called greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. The Bible says, he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Many people want to run to Delta or rivers. Say, ah, oh yeah, we're coming to chop our share of the national cake. Go and find out how many poor people were born and bred in that same land. Are you listening to me? Everybody say, I have a gift. Say it, I have a gift. It can make room for me. It can take me from where I am to where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Kibakarosa talimbrataya. Somebody is catching this thing and living some realms forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Catching this and living some realms forever. Hallelujah. Who would have known that comedians will be paid millions in Nigeria today? Look up please everybody. How many of you used to play football and you come back home and they've kept the cane to flog you? As soon as you are entering, there's a way you greet your father. He says, hey, hey, you already know that this night. But today, that same football, are you listening to me? That same football has blessed people. Comedians, for heaven's sake, they won't come until you give them 2.5 million or 5 million to come and talk. They just crack a joke. Hallelujah. There are artists today, artists today, those who draw caricature for banks, they are paid millions of naira. Millions of naira. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you this night, something will happen in your life. Some of you, it will happen instantly. A young man called Gray Farah, many of you know him. Gray Farah at age 10, was wondering what to do with his life and he found out that he liked stones and he decided to start painting stones so that people will use it to just you know just press their books and their doorposts and people started looking at him and laughing every time people saw it they just laughed and they said well let's just help this small boy little did they know that that was a champion in the making a time came, he started packaging those stones very well. At age 12, Grefara became a millionaire. At age 14, he was seated in the board of directors of 14 companies. Age 14. How old are you? Are you listening to me? I want you to know that if you take advantage of the gift, the gift of God is his seed in you that is supposed to help you enter the realm where you have influence and honor to legislate on behalf of heaven. Are you listening to me? Jeremiah Gyang, I've told you, Jeremiah Gyang used to be in Joss. That guy they call Jeremiah Gyang. Now, um, whether they are serving Satan or God is not the issue now. Are you listening to me? The issue is that the gifts were developed. You, you, get, you get the point? The guy you call M.I., I've said it, Jesse Jacks, who were Sunday school mates. While all of us were looking at ladies, hey, pastor's daughter, this, those guys were building their potentials. Just like some of you were doing. You go to church, you won't sit down, 
you will use your offering money, buy ice cream, be playing ball at the back of the church. That's what you were doing. Whereas others were hearing the word and going. See the difference right now. Are you listening to me? That these things have been perverted does not negate the fact that if they are gifts, they will still bring men to honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Second Kings 4. The story of an interesting woman. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So the, the person was the son of a prophet. Look at me. I want to tell you something. Maybe I'm going to create another controversy now this night. Listen. That your man of God or your spiritual father or mentor is anointed does not automatically guarantee that you will enter success. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says this guy was the son of who? That means he does not respect anointing. Hmm. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest what thy servant, that thy servant fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slaves. And Elisha said to her, listen now. This woman was in a situation where she needed a miracle. Two of her children were going to go as slaves. Hallelujah. What did Elisha tell her? He said, what shall I do for you? And he asked a question. He said, tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What do you have where? In your house. And the Bible says, there is this treasure in this house, these earthen vessels. He said, what do you have? The woman had been running helter-skelter, running helter-skelter, and she met the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Could it be that many of you who have been running helter skelter or many families need to calm down and look at what you have in your house? I've learned by experience and by the word that the blessing of a man is always not far from him. It's just that there is no discernment to recognize it. Are you listening to me? Yes, the blessing of a man is always not far from him. Sometimes it's ridiculously close. You may not even know. There were many people who walked with Jesus, yet they were looking for miracles and until Jesus went to heaven, they were not blessed. Because they did not realize. Your miracle can be so close, you may not know. The Bible says, And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house except what? A pot of oil. You see how she didn't place value on it? The Bible says she said, Thy handmaid had what? Nothing. Nothing. That means this thing is not of worth, but just for the sake of answering you, let it be there. Thy handmaid had nothing. There are many of you that God has given you certain things and you have been calling it nothing. 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 The gift of a man. Whether it's a spiritual gift, is whatever kind of gift the Bible says the gift of a man can single handedly pick you where you are, take you out, and exalt you. It can, it can, I tell you, it can. Hallelujah. The man called Reinhard Bonke, he said he was considered by everybody to be a dollar, what people call a dollar, complete dollar, dollar IQ, low, everything low. But one day he discovered that there was the gift of God in his life. And today, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world celebrate this man. Called Reinhard Bonke. His name is synonymous to soul winning. Because he discovered the gift. And it created space for him among the great. It ushered him. When you are mentioning great people in history, you will mention him. Men who have done great things for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? In history, there's a woman called Mother Teresa. Didn't have the ability to heal the sick and do all of this, but she discovered that she had a gift in her. She refined it to a point that she gave it and gave her life and forever history will remember her. Are you hearing me? The gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. 
Ah, your parents planned for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The congestion is always below. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can pay the price to rise to the top, you will sit there and be wondering. 90% of the world's wealth is controlled by less than 10% of the world's population. And they left the remaining 10%. They spread it across and flung some in Africa and everybody is running like rats. Whereas somebody can arise 